Well, hello there, it's Kid Bombing here, and welcome back to my channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad to see you through joining me on this wonderful, magical Christmas season of the year. I hope you feel a festive spirit upon you, between your friends and family around the world. So, first of all, I'm going to do another read aloud stories for a long time together in this wonderful Christmas season. I'll be doing another Disney stories for you guys. So first of all, I have got Di Walt Disney's Mickey's Christmas Carol, published by Disney's Wonder World of Reading. It's this story was inspired by Charles Dickens and also anim animated Disney short in 1983. Okay, so what I tend to do are going to read by words for each page and also showing his pictures. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, and feel cozy and warm. One on that on the day before Christmas, Ebenezer Scrooge walked into his counting house and surprised his clerk at the stove. What do you think you are doing, Bob Cratchit? Bug Scrooge. I just add in some coal to the stove, said Cratchit. It's so cold in here for ink the ink froze. You can warm the ink in your hands, says Scrooge. Now quit wasting my coal and get back to work. Yes, sir. And speaking of work, sir, tomorrow is Christmas. May I may I have please have a day off, said Crutchet. Bah oh, I suppose so, says Scrooge. But you won't get any pay. No, sir. Thank you, sir, said Crouchet. Scrooge and Crouchet settled down to work, but suddenly the door burst open. In came Scrooge's nephew, Fred. Merry Christmas, everyone, said Fred called. What do you want? says asked Scrooge. I've come to give you a brief and fire you to Christmas dinner, said Fred. Families should be together at Christmas. Poor humbug, says Scrooge. I'm not interested in family or Christmas. Now go away and busy. But, Uncle, said Fred, you will miss a wonderful dinner. We're going to have roast goose with chestnut dressing, plum pudding and with lemon juice, Can candied fruits with sugared sugar, Spice sugar cakes. Now you won't come. Are you daft, man? says Scrooge. You know I can't eat fat stuff. Come if you change your mind, said Fred, and handled a wreath to his uncle. Here, I don't want this thin, says Scrooge. But Fred was already out of the door. But humbug, says Scrooge. He said it all day, and it was still saying it when he left work and that night. Scrooge spent Christmas Eve at home in front of a fire. He was just dozing off when he heard a sound of chains. Then the voice moaned. Scrooge! Who's there? asked Scrooge. That stirred the ghost of Scrooge's dead partner, Jacob Marley. I have a message for you, Scrooge," said Marley. "You you know how I used to steal from widows and cheat the poor." "Yes, and all in the same day," said Scrooge. "It was one of me," said Marley. "Now I am being punished. I must drag around these heavy chains and cash boxes forever," said Marley. And the same thing will happen to you, Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge gasped. No, no, help me, Jacob, he begged. Tonight, you will be visited by three spirits. Do what they say, or your chains will be heavier than mine, said Marley. Then the old Marley disappeared through the door. Farewell, he called. No, wait, Jacob cried Scrooge. Come back. Tell me more. 
but the script, the ghost of Marley was gone. At bedtime, Scrooge looked nervously around, but there was no one to be seen. Spirits, huh? Eh? He said, bah humbug. Scrooge was soon fast asleep, but in the middle of the night, a soft din 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 woke him up. He peeked through between the bed curtains. Someone was tapping the bell on his alarm clock. Wake up, wake up, said the stranger. Who are you? asked Scrooge. I am the ghost of Christmas past, said the stranger. He hopped onto Scrooge's hand. Hold on to me, but not too tight, he said. We're going to visit your past. The, the spirit opened his umbrella and whoosh. He and Scrooge rose to the sky. Scrooge and the spirit flew high over the rooftops. Scrooge was too scared to look. The spirit and Scrooge landed in front of a brightly light window. Spirit, I know this place, said Scrooge. It's the warehouse where I worked as a lad. What good times I had here with my friends. The spirit wiped the snow off of a window pan and Scrooge looked in at a Christmas party under the mustertoe. A lovely young lady danced with a sh shy young man. Why, it's Isabel and me, said Scrooge. He watched the young lady and sighed. How I once loved her, he said. Until you learn to love more money, said the spirit. Scrooge, eyes filled with tears. All my old friends, they're all lost to me now, he said sadly. That's the way you lot want it, you know, said the spirit. Oh, spirit, please take me home, cried Scrooge. I can't bear to remember more anymore. And the next thing, he knew he was back in his bed and his alarm clock was winning. Scrooge opened the curtains, bed curtains. There stood the giant. Who are you? cried Scrooge as the giant's hand reached for him. The giant picked up Scrooge and said, I am a ghost of Christmas present. I am talking to you taking you to meet some people with kindness in their hearts, even for the mean old my, me, miser like you. And popped Scrooge into his pocket. The giant walked through the streets until he reached the po part of town. The giant set Scrooge down in front of a shabby house. It was the home of Bob Cratchit, Scrooge's underpaid clerk. Bob and his merry children were trimming the tree. It was time for Christmas dinner. Where is Tiny Tim? says Crouchet. Come in, father, called the little boy. Is he limped down the stairs? Bob picked up his lamb son and carried him to the table. My, what a feast, said Tiny Tim. And it was a feast for the Crouchets, but there were they really wasn't much food. Let's drink a toast to Mr Scrooge, said Tiny Tim. We own our wonderful dinner to him. Scrooge was touched. There's a kind lad, he said. But the boy looked so sickly, Scrooge said. Tell me, spirit, what is wrong with him? Much I'm afraid, said a giant. What will help him to Tim? asked Scrooge. There was no answer. Scrooge turned round. The giant was gone, and in his place stood the ghost of Christmas future. Sir Spirit led Scrooge to the graveyard. He showed Scrooge the grave of Tiny Tim. Oh, poor lad. Oh, the poor lad, said Scrooge. Was there no way to save him? The spirit did not answer. Instead, he pointed to another grave. With, with fear in his heart, Scrooge walks up to the grave. 
reeds grow all over. No one cared about the person buried there. Scrooge read the headstone and gasped. The grave was his own. Scrooge ran from his grave in terror. Spirit, tell me, it's not too late. He cried, tell me, I still have time to change. I'll change, I promise I'll change. I'll help Tim, Tiny Tim. Things will be better. Suddenly Scrooge tripped on the tree root and tumbled down, down, down. And landed with a bump on the hard floor. Dazed, Scrooge looked around. He was in his own bedroom and daylight was coming in the window. Scrooge ran to the window and threw it open. He could hear church bells winning. It's Christmas morning. He cried, it's not too late. The spirits gave me another chance. I know just what I do, said Scrooge said. He dressed in a hurry. Then he ran out of the house and rushed down the street. Pennies for the poor? asked two tangemen. They were collecting for charity. Pennies, you need gold, cried Scrooge. And he dropped some gold into the fair cup. Then he danced off down the street. Scrooge found in a toy house, toy shop, and bought a big bag of toys. Won't they be surprised? He said. I can't wait to see their faces. Scrooge saw his nephew driving by. Merry Christmas, Fred, he called. Fred stopped with a chult. Jolt. Uncle Scrooge, he said in surprise. I'm looking forward to your Chris delicious Christmas dinner, said Scrooge. You mean you're coming? asked Fred. Of course, said Scrooge. Scrooge walked through the town calling Merry Christmas to everyone he saw. Finally, he reached the shabby house. He stopped and knocked on the door. Merry Christmas, Pouchet, Cratchit, said Scrooge. As he surprised Clark opened the door, I've bought some things for the children. And he gave them the most wonderful toys they had ever seen. And for you, Crouchet, said Scrooge, a raise a big one. Oh, thank you, sir, said Crouchet. And he and his wife danced for joy. Scrooge had a merry visit with the family. He ate and drank and even played with the children. A toast to all the Crouchets, said Scrooge. And Tiny Tim added, and God blesses everyone. Yeah, and so, this is a very most wonderful and charitable Christmas season of the year. I hope you enjoyed the story of Mickey's Christmas Carol. It was so absolutely wonderful Christmas Disney themed. Read aloud. I hope you enjoyed this video. So, last year it was a wonderful and fantastic to celebrate 100 years of Walt Disney Company's been found in 1923 behind the most magical legacy behind the animation studio has been changed okay so I hope you're looking forward to Christmas season this coming December and I hope you'll see you soon on the next video